unpleasant enough outside that you kind of just, eh, you want to, um, well, let me put it this way. It is so nice in the heated cab. And the only way to get back home is to solve some new Rubik's Cube. The life of the tree man. Show up. That's the first thing. The most important thing with any endeavor is to show up. And the next thing is similar. You, you take the first step outside the heated cab. Then you start assessing what you'll need to do. And then if it's a tree removal, like in this case, it'll have things that talk to you that kind of lead you. And you'll begin to make your plans. And it will literally be as simple as cutting off parts of the tree until the tree's gone. And then at some point in time, after skill and mistake and skill and grace, and luck. I know some people don't believe in luck, but I believe luck is a thing that can happen. If you just said it this way, a coincidence that works in your favor, that would be good luck. A nasty coincidence that does not work in your favor would be bad luck. Some of the Bible types don't believe in luck. They believe in everything happens for a reason. I think that God can make good things out of what happens. Uh, Solomon said, time and chance happen to everyone. Doesn't time and chance sound like luck? That's right out of the book. And then there's this other place where Jesus was talking about this tower that fell. Siloam, I think it was called. And he was saying, were, were those people killed because they deserved it? Or were they just in the wrong place at the wrong time? That sounds like a nasty coincidence that did not work out in their favor. Anyway, so I believe in in luck, but not in the in the leprechaun type of way. All that just to say at the end of the day, you eventually go home after time and luck and grace and skill, and more skill, and cooperation, and hard work, you go home. And that daunting task that you didn't want to face is behind you, and you're happy about it. But in the same way, time is marching on, and leading you past all sorts of things that you kind of don't want to be going fast, like your health, your relationships, the childhood time of your children zooming by. That's what that's what really kills. You're out solving some Rubik's Cube problem at work that seems important. And it is, because you have to provide. You should. And while you're gone, time's going by. And then, children get older. Am I just going on and on with no end point? It's possible. There's no summary to this. It's right where I started. Just show up. Do your best. And as much as possible, not that you're asking for advice, but if you are, try not to take for granted all of those super important things that are waiting for you at home. All of those important goals, because I think in the reflective years of a person's life, when they can't go solve those puzzles anymore, they will have more regrets about what they didn't do with their opportunities than regrets about mistakes they made, you know, like big blunders. So go ahead and dream big and make big blunders but don't pile up regrets of omission things that you didn't do that you could have done go ahead and make that phone call to that person spend that time with that person 
take care of your body, nurture your relationships. Sorry to get so real. I'm gonna go deal with this Rubik's Cube now and I'll be right there with all those who will listen later on the other important stuff. Speaking of Rubik's Cubes, I've found the problems. Yeah, here don't they worry. are. Don't worry, we can solve it. <laughs> Maple tree in a tiny strip. You know, if we were just lifting over the back of the crane and set, basically lifting, booming up, and setting. Lifting, booming up, and setting. Are you and suggesting not using outriggers? And I'm not suggesting anything. Okay. But. <laughs> this is a skinny driveway. I mean, we could always use what we can. Like, that, and, uh, that pick will be the furthest left. We, we can maybe put something there or there. So this is the planning phase of the Rubik's Cube like I was talking about. But, I think as long but as more importantly, know. describe Jeff's face in two words. Plucked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, that's mean. Yeah, I heard it from somebody. I heard it somewhere one time <laughs> this morning. Uh, I would say uh, James Bond. Bond? Yeah. Jeff Bond. Jeff Bond. Gold Bond. Jeff Gold Bond. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Back to it. Yeah, let's try to get the crane in here but through some force of magic. Either that. Or I'm going to go up there and tie in and do some rigging right over the driveway, which would also be fun. I think it's doable if we just don't go that big and just pick set, pick set, pick set, just build well, this. The problem is we need a place for our outriggers. <clears throat> Let me back in here and see what happens. We're going to prune this uh, magnolia. It's probably the biggest magnolia tree in town. Uh, this might not make it in the video. Maybe I'll show it before. We don't really video pruning because we don't like it as much for video. So it's it's too um, congested, and it has end weight issues. It has places where in snow it's broke and it's been burdened. And we've been here before, and we've done end weight reduction, and we're gonna do it again. What got us here was that they didn't do any work on the tree for eons and then a giant whatever match that side broke off on this side. Yeah, I think uh, Travis Barney was here and pruned this last. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it was Travis oh, Barney. Oh, for me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Of this old cement work was already like this before we ever came in here. This tree is enveloping the wall. It's a tiny strip of earth for it to live in and it's been dying back more every year. We've been in it a few times trying to make it safer and they're finally tired of not being able to park under it. Hour and 20 minutes later Meanwhile, Jeff is making progress over here.
I liked how he said it. It was, it sounded funny. Oh. Yeah, there's some bad spots in this thing. yet received my medallion of super galactic oneness. Should be. Oh, I had a little piece. I know, I can see it too. So coming back to the Magnolia, we've done end weight strategically all the way around. We've done some mower clearance for the landscapers when they mow. And the tree is overall a, a lot more airy, so he's taking a lot of congestion out of the middle. We'll go up here and look through it a little bit and see that it's been made a lot more airy than it was. When we looked at it this morning, it's cleaner. End weight over the neighbor also. Impossible to see from here, but it's a makeover. We got our stabilizers in there and out of there without harming the uh, lavender. We still have to grind the stump and that'll be a challenge because of the way it envelops the concrete, but that's enough video for one day. I think the reason I was talking about family stuff, relationship stuff, uh, the real stuff this morning was because it was cold and rainy and I didn't want to leave and my little boy was telling me some stuff and he was taking a while to get to the point and I was like, I should be able to sit here with him and take the time it takes to listen to him. So it was kind of on me this morning, kind of like the What's that song? Oh yeah, the cat's in the cradle. Check out my Working Man Blues video and you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's from years ago. And Daddy, you play with me? Maybe later, I gotta go to work. I still, I'm not home all the time like I'd like to be, but I'm home again now. We solved that puzzle and it's time to go and hear the rest of what he was trying to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> 